half in the bag. I can't stop watching movies. Thank you, John. I'll have the deposit checked to you by next week. Yes, yes, extra oysters. Mr. Plinkett likes them raw and slimy, he said. He wants to feel the slime from the raw oyster trickle down his gullet. Exact words, yes, he's a classy gentleman. <laughs> and he wanted to know if sweatpants are okay at the Four Seasons. Um, he has a tuxedo, yes, I bought him one for the wedding. Uh, he just will not wear it. He says, sweatpants and or tracksuit. Okay, once you talk to the hotel manager, you let me know. Ta-ta! What was that about? Your fucking gay wedding! Well, now that I've got my business phone call out of the way, I got the whole afternoon open. I know we're sitting on about 20 orders to repair VCRs, but I just don't feel like doing that today. I feel like talking about a new movie I saw called Mother. Oh, Mother, you're talking about the, the biggest box office hit of the year, right? We should talk about Mother. Mm-hmm. No! I'm very excited about the Mother cinematic universe that'll uh, spawn in the wake of this film's success. Um, it's well, nice to see uh, Jennifer Lawrence returning to her superhero you know, roots after the X-Men movies. Yes. And now she's back. She's back in the fold of, of superhero films with her new superhero character, Mother. Mother. Young adult uh, novels, YA as they're called in the biz. Mm. Uh, this, this Mother was based on a young adult novel. Oh, okay. So moms and dads out there, if you have young girls who are into the Hunger Games, you take them to see Mother. They're gonna love it. Basically what we're saying is this is a movie for everyone. Everyone can enjoy this film. Which is why it's playing at multiplexes yes. around the nation. Paramount said, this is gonna be huge. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's delve into this. Uh, I think we're more fascinated by the fact that this got a wide release than we are with the film itself. Yes. Um... I was shocked because I saw early on I was hearing about this movie. It's Darren Aronofsky. It's supposed to be kind of like shocking and uh, intense. And then I saw the trailer and it kind of had like a, like a horror movie vibe. And I was like, this, I, I thought this was going to be like a smaller release, like independent theaters, art house theaters or whatever. So I don't know. I, I commend Paramount Pictures for taking this route of like taking a chance on releasing a movie this sort of extreme and weird to a wide audience. But... I, I have to wonder, did they really think this would be something other than a flop? I didn't hate the, I mean, we haven't really talked about the movie at all. I didn't hate the movie. I have very mixed feelings about it, but I don't know what they were thinking as far as like, if they thought they could trick people into thinking it was a horror film or what. Well, yeah, that's the worst thing you could possibly do is to trick people. And I mean, unless you're really going to, I don't know, maybe this movie went over budget. I mean, there's a lot of things going on in it. I don't we, know. we do have a, a kind of egomaniac director at the helm, so that could be an element of it. I, I, I don't know what J Law's uh, paycheck was. Maybe she worked for free because she's uh, uh, in a romantic relationship with Darren Aronofsky. Well, and Mother is definitely not a movie made to fuel a director's ego. This is an audience film. This is a movie made to please a crowd. Right, right. Well, Jay, uh, let's get this out of the way, out of the bat. I, uh, I've seen a number of Darren Aronofsky films, but uh, I've, never, I've never seen him or heard him speak. Have you now, after seeing this film, have you looked in interviews? Yes. Does it explain a lot? Yes. <laughs> I thought it, his name was so, it's like, it was like foreign and exotic, like Darren Aronofsky. And I just pictured some like. No, he's just like this pretentious douchebag. He, you know what? I was like, oh my God, he sounds like, like a Brooklyn cab driver. And it starts off as one type of movie, and then you think it's that type of movie, and then it shifts and it becomes another type of movie, and then it shifts and becomes another type of movie. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I thought about, I make a movie about the earth or something. And, uh, <laughs> I put some uh, religious shit in there. There's this thing called the Bible, and it's got a bunch of stories. Uh, uh, your fare's $22. 
<laughs> and then I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I and I look him up on Wikipedia, and he's like, born in Brooklyn. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, I have my my accent power is exactly perfect. I'm like this guy is a Brooklyn cab driver, <laughs> and he's making movies. <laughs> um, and 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 so I was like, and then the 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 like the nonchalant kind of way, I was like, don't talk about it. Don't make this movie mother, and just don't do any press for it. Be mysterious, dude. Well, that's, don't that's... say anything. He's like, ah, I made a movie. I, I guess uh, Jennifer Lawrence is like Mother Earth or some <laughs> shit. And I turned the camera on and I said, do something. It, it really puts the movie in perspective, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Uh, when I started working on the film, I really wanted to make this kind of allegory about Mother Nature and our place uh, and our connection to our home. And so I cast Jennifer Lawrence as that spirit. And then I had this breakthrough of bringing in, uh, using to tell the story of humanity, the stories of the Bible. Oh no, the, the veil has been shredded around Darren Aronofsky and his, and his mysterious ar artistic genius. Oh. Um, now I know it's just a con job. <laughs> See, I knew that going in. I, I, uh, before seeing this movie, I avoided anything like specific about what it was about, but I had heard that it's... Uh, very, very over the top and extreme and uh, obvious. And I was like, oh, so it's a Darren Aronofsky movie. Uh, aside from The Wrestler, which is my favorite movie he's done and maybe one of my favorite movies ever. That's a very more kind of subdued and grounded movie. I've not um, seen that. Uh, uh, the Wrestler is so good, but, but yeah, Rick, Mickey Rourke is fantastic in it. And yeah, it's very, it gets a little bit of the, the sort of slightly over the top emotional kind of, you know, extreme stuff a tiny tiny bit okay um but in the the realm of darren aronofsky it's pretty low but like black swan is a movie i like a lot even though when i saw it in the theater there was multiple parts where i burst out laughing um so over the top i'm i'm used to with darren aronofsky um, what i'm not used to is the uh, poor attempts at making a movie that is entirely metaphorical and just completely falling on your face I think the best way I would describe this movie, it's like the when people talk about Independence Day or like a Michael Bay movie, how they say, you just got to shut your brain off and enjoy it. This is the art house version of that, where if you completely ignore the ham-fisted, obvious biblical metaphors, uh, which are not, there's not even any room, like it's open to your interpretation. Like, no, it's very clear what he's doing. And apparently in interviews, he's saying that too, I guess. If you ignore that, if you ignore like what this movie is supposed to really be about and just look at it as this nightmare of this poor woman who just has people keep showing up to her house and it becomes this disaster, it's entertaining in that respect. You just have to ignore the intentions of the filmmaker. Yeah, um, I, I think I compared the majority of it to the Turn Down For What music video. Oh, there you go. Turn down for what? So I saw a couple quotes that were like, this movie's so fucking vile and just despicable and it make you puke and and I'm like, oh my gosh. And then, so so yes, that is a possible marketing strategy. Just like, it's bat shit off the chain. Go check it out. Everybody, you gotta see this movie. Um, but then after we saw it, uh, a person behind us, a couple rows, just went, that was a bunch of shit. <laughs> no, I think they just went, that was stupid. That was stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and yeah, this is a movie that doesn't really work for general, definitely doesn't work for general audiences. And I don't know how well it's going to work for people that are into more art house stuff because it kind of fails at that too. Uh, Javier Bardem uh, plays the, the poet, or him. I think he's credited as him. But he, he's a poet in the movie, he's a writer. And Jennifer Lawrence is his new bride. And they are restoring a mansion that he lived in that burned down or had a horrible fire and she is lovingly restoring the house while he has writer's block. That, that is like the surface level, like real life kind of shit. Yes. That's the storyline. Then Ed Harris shows up and he's like, I'm a doctor, uh, I'd like to uh, stay here with you. And then his wife shows up, the sons, and then, um, and then more and more people keep showing up and it becomes a nightmare. And then, it, yeah, for, for her, Jennifer Lawrence is just like this, this pure hearted, doughy eyed, like, yeah, she's, she's very passive and the more crazy, the more people show up, the more the house gets destroyed. She's getting frustrated, but she's still 
you know, kind of not doing anything about it. Yeah. So it's like, why are you coming here and destroying my house? Yes. Um, so then it, it becomes painfully clear that at some point, everyone is just allegorical. Yes, this is a retelling of the Bible. Basically, Javier Bardem is God, Jennifer Lawrence is Mother Nature. Mother Nature mixed with a little Virgin Mary. Yes, well, that's, that's, there's a little bit of a clash as far as what the metaphors are supposed to be, so we can get into that. But yeah, Mother Nature slash Virgin Mary, the house is our Earth. Uh, Ed Harris is Adam, Michelle Pfeiffer is Eve. They have two sons that show up and fight, and one of them gets killed. They're Cain and Abel. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence is pregnant. She has a baby. That's Jesus. Uh, all these people that start to show up are uh, religious people, zealots. They start to, well, not all of them are zealots, but they start to, as they take over the house, there's different sort of interpretations of Javier Bardem's work. Mm -hmm. So then you have these fractions and then wars get fought in the house over that. He's essentially uh, writing what I assume is the Bible. Yes, well, there's his first book that people like. So you could say that's the Old Testament, and now he has this new book out that people are flocking to. That's the New Testament. Yeah, and that's right around um, the time the baby's born, yes. which is the Jesus, and... Well, we won't talk about that. <laughs> um, oh, and then uh, Ed Harris is there before his wife. He shows up, and he's sick, and... Uh, there, but there's a little, couple little clues into, like, like, thinking about it after the fact, Cain and Abel. I'm like, okay, the two brothers, one of them kills the other. Obviously, yeah. that's that's Cain and Abel. And then, there, I mean, there's also like the, the prodigal son biblical story where one son is the good loyal son and the one son's shitty oh, yeah. and comes back and then the father forgives him anyway. It's like, there, there's a couple of different brothers-y storylines in the Bible, but definitely I think that's Cain and Abel because um, uh, Cain, the bad one that kills the brother, it says that He's left with a mark on his forehead by God, so for some Got reason. Got it! Um, and early on, Ed Harris, before Michelle Pfeiffer, he's Adam, she's Eve, before she shows up, he's staying overnight at their house, and they say, oh, he drank too much, and he's throwing up in the toilet, and Javier Bardem is, like, comforting him, and Jennifer Lawrence looks in, and she looks like, uh, he's got, like, a bruise on his side by his ribs. Do you get it? I noticed that, too. Do you get it? Uh, <laughs> So, so God takes a rib from uh, Adam and makes Eve, yes. who is Michelle Pfeiffer, who's, show, who's drunk all the time and wants to talk about panties. <laughs> because Eve was the one that ruined Eden by taking a bite from the apple and blah, 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 blah. But yeah, when, like, uh, this movie kind of also reminded me of the Matrix trilogy in a way, because there was lots of allegorical, metaphorical things in that, like, you know, and then it's like, and at sure. the end, everything resets. Yeah, but at least in that, it's, I mean, those sequels suck, but at least that's telling its own story. Exactly. That's and kind that, of the problem with this movie, that's is that it's not. big, big problem. Yes. Um, it, it made me think of, and this is a weird comparison, but do you remember that movie Identity with John Cusack? Yes. It's like a Ten Little Indians thing? Yes. Where it's like you have all these characters that they set up, and then halfway through the movie, spoilers for the shitty movie that nobody remembers, those characters are all in the head of a crazy man. The guy, with, like, the, the guy with the The guy with the weird the vibrating eyes. eyes. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, okay, so they're not real people, but they keep coming back to them as if we're supposed to care about their fate. And it's like, but they're not real? I don't give a shit? And that's kind of the problem with this is... Outside of the metaphor, there is no actual connection to reality. What do they want? They've come here to see me. You can make your film an allegory, but like you said, keep it grounded in reality. Yeah. The first half of this, you're watching it and you're like, okay, I'm with this. This is getting weird. This, it's what's going on. And, and based on the trailers and people's reactions. Like, it gets fucking crazy. And I'm like, okay, is this gonna be like, um, like a Get Out, like a movie like that, where it starts off normal and then you realize, I'm, I was like, okay, are, is um, uh, Ed Harris and Michelle Pfeiffer, are they part of some kind of weird satanic cult? Are they gonna try and sacrifice her, her baby to Satan? Some, is something like that gonna happen? That's kind of like, kind of horror-ish, but still very mundane and basic, sure. you know, like still gross and creepy, but weird. Um, and then, and then once it starts to fall apart, like, like when all the people, there's that one moment where she's, she's trying to paint her walls, right? She's very, very meticulous about the color. They show her like tweak the color a little. And it's very, something that's very important to her. Yeah. Um, and then the crazy people, like, um, they have like a funeral party there and there's like hundreds of people running around and they show people like with paint rollers. They're just like, we just had to paint your walls. Yeah. And she's and like, what the fuck? Yeah. You're fucking up my house. Right, I, I'm painting with with a with like a 
thing, and I'm just being very, very careful about it and very, very uh, loving. Yeah. And and they're just like paint rollers. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, this is a nightmare. She's gonna wake up. Nope. It just keeps going. Well, and then at that point, at, the, at that point, I'm just like. Man, I'm checking out. <laughs> um, because I, once the reality button, the reality off, boop, reality off button is hit. Yeah. Well, I'm gone. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, for me, it's more that it was just so ham fisted and obvious as far as the, the, the metaphor goes. Like, okay, we're retelling the Bible. Got it. But you have to have that extra layer where it still works as its own story. And that's what this was missing. Yeah. Um, I mean, you look at like one of my favorite movies is Eraserhead. It's abstract, very surreal, but it's surreal within its world. Almost like a like a science fiction film. Like you don't look at a science fiction film to see our reality. There's you know weird aliens and crap. But that's the world of the movie. Eraserhead has its own world and it's telling its own story. This movie is not telling a story. It's just doing a metaphorical retelling of the Bible. And I don't know like to what end. To me, it was more environmental than biblical because biblical was just sort of like I'll pluck this and this story and this story. To, to kind of make characters and, and drama happen. Sure. Um, it but, just feels like a, like a clash to me. Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, using to tell the story of humanity, the stories of the Bible. You know the one I promised? Quiet! Do you get it? Do you get it? Do you get, Do you get it? it? Good performances, mostly all around. I, I really like the way Javier Bardem played the part because he's essentially like an egotistical artist asshole, um, a Darren Aronofsky stand-in, <laughs> and uh, but he plays it very like like calm. Like when she's like, "Stay with me, don't go back out there with all the crazy people," and he's like, "Well, I just want to go to go you know talk to them. They're 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 happy to see me." Like he's very like almost oblivious to how much of an egotistical asshole he is. Uh, I loved that. It was nice seeing Ed Harris. I can't think of the last time I saw him in something. Michelle Pfeiffer, I haven't seen in forever. She's really good at it. Everybody's good in it. Jennifer Lawrence is adequate. I don't know if you can make a super cut with the trailer, but she basically has the same expression through the whole movie. Bewilderment. Yes, which is kind of the point. I mean, she's supposed to be sort of passive, but I don't know, man, especially towards the end. Like, uh, I mean, because she goes through a lot, like physically, it's a demanding role, especially as it goes along. But like, you gotta really go for it. And, and it's more sort of like the movie works in spite of her because she's kind of one note. I, I was picturing like, uh, like for a movie that gets this heightened and over the top, it reminded me of one of my favorite movies, it's called Possession from 1981, it's Sam Neill and Isabella Johnny. And it's similar in the sense that it gets so over the top that it, it borders on farcical. But in that movie, it, it works because the performances are so great. And, and Isabella and Johnny specifically is so like fearless. There's even people that haven't seen the movie, there's this famous scene that people know about where she like loses her mind in a subway tunnel. and she's flailing around and she's throwing groceries and she just is like laying on the ground and screaming. And it's really over the top in a, in a, in a way that works for the material. And I was waiting for Jennifer Lawrence to kind of reach that point and she never does. There's even the part when she's like getting the, we're in spoilers, right? She's getting the shit beat out of her and people are like tearing at her clothes and calling her like a slut and a whore. And like, you should be kind of wrecked by the end of that scene, like as an audience member. And instead, I just felt like I was watching Jennifer Lawrence with makeup on. Like, eh, she didn't really, she didn't go for it. She wasn't uh, going as extreme as I think something like that called for. Which, in addition to the fact that these aren't real characters, that kind of helps, or that kind of prevents you from getting invested as well. That definitely harms your investment. Yes. Uh, but, uh, th I mean, I, I wouldn't blame her entirely. It might be the direction, it, it I don't know. It might be the but... direction because, like, uh, she's playing Mother Earth and they keep cutting to her like she touches the house and they show the heart of the earth and over time it happens like three or four times it gets like more and more black and dead do you get it 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so mother, I think the, the, the point was that she never got super angry ever is the fact that Mother Earth is, is forgiving up until a point. Right. And then like the, the labor pains from her baby are sort of like her getting angrier and angrier. And then, but yeah, after what happens at the end happens, uh, she does get mad, but it, 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 you don't feel it. You know that it's not real life. And this is me speaking. Right. I know that it's not real life, so I don't <laughs> care anymore. Yeah. I just want to hear Turn Down For What in the background <laughs> on the soundtrack. Yeah. Turn down for what? Turn down for what? And then it works as like a really good visual representation of what an actual dream is like. It was interesting because because it's like he brings down his book and he's like, read my book or whatever he wrote, his brilliant work of art. Right. And she reads it, she has a tear, and, and she's like, it's brilliant. And, and he's like, yes, my, uh, my publisher's on the phone. And how, how does your publisher read it already, you know? Yeah, that there's this like, escalation of time that, yes, that goes the, on throughout the movie. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the time factor, and that happens in dreams. Yeah, where it's well, like, and then when you get towards the end, when it's like more and more people show up, and now there's, she goes upstairs, and then when she comes back down, it's like a completely different situation that's happening. It's got even more out of control yeah, yeah. as far as like people fighting. Yeah, and, well, this yeah. stream of consciousness kind of like. That's what I'm saying. All that stuff is great if you ignore what the movie is supposed to be about. <laughs> and and the movie's simplistic message is people are shitty to the earth. It's almost like it makes you feel like 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 a little kid in in like sixth grade. The earth was a beautiful place until mankind came and started smogging it up and ruining it. Yeah. That's the message that's, of the this, movie. This is my science report. Well, that's I, I was thinking after the movie, I was like, this is the, the most expensive student film ever made. It, it, it's such a student film concept. Yes. Um, I, yes. remember, I remember being in film school and there was a kid that showed his film. It was just like shots of tree branches. And the teacher was like, what's with the tree branches? And he just goes, it represents human frailty. And I was just like, okay, what's your point? Like, you can say it represents something, but you also have to have a point on top of that. Mankind bad, ruin Earth. Got it, yeah, okay. Yeah, We're, what do we want? Should we all kill ourselves? <laughs> there's, there's a fucking eight billion of us on the planet. Yeah. Can we talk about the baby? Okay, we're talking about the baby now. Uh, spoilers, spoilers. Spo definitely know. spoilers and definitely... We've uh, already spoiled most of the movie. Sh shut this off if you want to hear grotesque stuff. Yeah, I, I think because people are saying the movie gets so extreme and grotesque, it's really just this one aspect, which is the baby's born, yeah. baby's sacrificed and eaten by people, mm -hmm. which is pretty fucking horrific. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm, I'm desensitized to all this crap, But uh, so I can understand someone just on a basic level of seeing that being you know freaked out or grossed out or offended by it but in the context of the movie you know it, it just felt like cheap shock value i mean i understand the point it's jesus and it's you have communion where you're drinking his blood and all that but i don't know it, it, it felt like extreme for the sake of it yeah religious religious symbolism i think more so the the eating it was like the the, the people killed him, like the crucifixion, and then it's like, he's like, you must forgive them. So it, it's, it's weird, like, and that's like, it epitomizes in that baby eating scene where I'm just watching it and I'm like, eh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I shouldn't have that reaction to a baby being slaughtered and eaten. It, yeah. It's, so it's, it's. Well, and it's just like taken to such, like, and Aronofsky does this all the time. I mean, Requiem for a Dream is a great movie, but it's also, you can almost look at it as like a contemporary reefer madness mm -hmm. as far as how over the top it gets with the drug aspects. And here, like the, the the crowd is like surfing the baby, and it's not that's not enough. You guys see the baby's piss flying into the air because it's scared. It's like, eh. But at the same time, that that lack of restraint is what makes the movie interesting in certain respects. I mean, like like a especially early on when more people start to show up before it gets like really crazy. I'm yes. just like this is like making me anxious. Uh, outside of what it's supposed to mean, it's just making me anxious. Yeah, I. I... I prefer the first half of the film before things went batshit crazy because I like the performances and I like the 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 feeling that you got from it, the yeah. the anxiety yeah. of, of what's exa what exactly is happening. How well, is and that's the uh, uh, the way the movie shot contributes to that too. It's lots of close ups. It's very claustrophobic. It, I loved the the look of it as far as the the lighting. It's very minimal. 
so many movies now. Ugly. It's well, do you think it's ugly in a bad way? Like I was fine with that. Oh, no, no, no. So many contemporary movies just look like like TV shows. They look so overlit, you know. And this is something that feels more. You, you know, could tell it was shot on film too. Yeah, it, it had that look to it. It had that kind of grainy like. Or a 70s. It's, it's gross similar to look. I, the wrestler, I think, was shot on 16 millimeter, so that's really grainy. I don't think this was, but similar kind of style as far as lots of like, in the, in the wrestler, there's lots of shots that are following Mickey Rourke kind of like from his from his back, so it's almost like you're following behind him, and there's a lot of that in this too. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know, man. Like I would say, anything you've read about this movie critically, like good or bad, they're right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This movie defies any sort of conventional, sort of critical uh, analysis. It is what it is. I, I commend Paramount to a certain extent for having the balls to put something like this out there yeah. uh, on such a wide release. Dumb decision on their part, but hey, at least they're taking a risk. Yeah. And uh, I, I wish it was at the service of a, a better movie. That's why I think it's great we're doing this movie on our show. It'd be great if we both really loved it. Yeah. Um, but. It's a shame that there's going to be a lot of people out there that go into this going, oh, it's a Jennifer Lawrence film. That was the worst shit I've ever seen. I'm only watching... Then they're turned off. Yeah, yeah I'm not watching Mother anymore. I'm only watching Mother's Day. That wonderful picture by Gary Marshall <laughs> that features people I know yeah. saying cliched things that warms your heart. I'm only watching that anymore. I'm not taking any more chances yeah. with weirdo stuff. No, take chances with weirdo stuff. Sometimes you'll find great things. And that's, I think Mother has, uh, has, has uh, eaten that fetus uh, <laughs> in a bad way. Well, I feel like there's also, it's almost like people have been conditioned where there's like this divide. Like look at something like The Shining from 1980, like a super popular movie. And like no one would go see that fucking movie if it was released today. That's true. Like, like yeah. there used to be kind of a mix in the, the larger studio movies. You used to get like a Stanley Kubrick. You'd still get dumb schlock. Uh, a lot of times it was more thoughtful dumb schlock than a lot of the stuff now. But it's like over time, there's just been this wedge between kind of more thoughtful movies and the really dumb stuff. Mm -hmm. Where like, I, I know people, like, because I was talking about It last time and how like they have to go for the big, cheap jump scares. Mm -hmm. And it's like, eh, you compare that to something like The Witch, which I didn't see it in the theater, but I heard that during some of the more, you know, kind of scary parts, people were in the theater were laughing because they've been so conditioned that something like it is what they're supposed to be scared by, you know, the big, loud stuff as opposed to something a little more quiet. Mm -hmm. So, and this isn't us being elitist because obviously we see all the Marvel movies and enjoy some of them as well. It, it's really just a matter of like how much thought is put into the movie and, and how much you can tell with some of these movies, the, the kind of studio mentality mm -hmm. of like make it dumb, make it obvious, make it play to the widest possible audience. I think that they, they were banking on the, the go see it. You got to check this shit out. It's yeah. fucking wild. <laughs> and, and people who just watch it and just for the visceral, emotional, like just this is crazy shit. Yeah. And we we look at something a little more like what were they trying to do with this and why why it didn't work. And so I think Paramount was banking on the the mass audience of of people going for the the word of mouth. It's batshit crazy kind of thing. And there's gonna be a whole bunch of disappointed grandmas <laughs> out there. I, mean, I, I think... like that Jennifer Lawrence. Oh my God. <laughs> Might I suggest a prank to any of your family members? I think you know what it is. Uh, just tell them to go watch Mother. Say it's a, it's the new uh, uh, Jennifer Lawrence film. Yes, directed by Gary Marshall. Um, Jennifer you know Lawrence. He's dead, right? Oh, uh, this, uh, that makes it spookier. That makes it spookier. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence plays a, a, a loving housewife, and Javier Bardem is trying to write his novel in their summer home in the in the field and. They have some unruly house guests. <laughs> What's gonna happen? <laughs> uh, tell grandma, your aunts, you know, to go check it out. And then send their angry phone call to voicemail. <laughs> you fucker! How could you do this to Nani? You're getting five dollars in your birthday card this year as opposed to ten. You fuck. <laughs> Ooh. 
mother. Rated R. <laughs> Let's check out mother. <laughs> or don't. Or don't, it doesn't matter. <laughs>